I've just discovered that Fusion 360 has included a driver for the Creality Ender 3 Pro. This video is about having a go at making that work. I haven't used this Ender 3 V2 Pro printer for around a year and I've uh, just fired it up with a simple design that I've done in Fusion 360 which isn't very fancy just something to try it's a uh, 12 point nut that I'm going to machine in steel while I was uh, using three, Fusion 360 and I haven't used it much in the last 12 months either I found the machine library on Fusion 360 has the Creality Ender 3 version 2 Pro printer in its library file and so I thought well I'll modify my uh, design slightly and uh, try printing it using the defaults that the uh, library uh, file on the Ender 3 suggest and even without leveling printer I uh, simply uh, posted the uh, g-code from uh, this area on the page to a file loaded it on the uh, micro SD card here uh, I did that using the USB adapter in my laptop here all I did with the uh, table on the printer was to give the print area a pretty good wipe down with a tissue it was quite dusty because it's been out in the dusty environment here for the whole year and I did not even bother changing the bed leveling I thought I could start this file and just see what happened now the, the uh, fusion program started over here in the home position and then drew that line across the front of the table and then from there headed into the design itself and it dragged a bit of uh, filament across to the circle there but it then proceeded to print the brim on this uh, component and uh, has now launched into just with all the defaults it set the table it's just the standard white PLA that came with the machine being fed into it at the moment uh, the Fusion defaults was a table of uh, 220C and a nozzle temperature of 60 and uh, I just let it run I, uh, I uh, didn't do the auto homing or the, or the table levelling at all I actually started with the gantry up at this height and it auto, when I loaded the program and ran the program at auto home first thing it did was start heating the bed once the bed got up to 220 degrees it auto home and began the process I am quite staggered if 3D printing like this I remember the last, last time I uh, attempted it I uh, flicked around with slices and everything uh, there's no slicing things uh, Fusion 360 handles the slicing and uh, um, uses defaults and I'm interested to see how those defaults work out but so far I couldn't be happier it's uh, going through the motion so uh, I it's using it's going to use some sort of infill pattern which I'm not familiar with but uh, that's fine it's uh, somebody's probably found an optimized uh, configuration for it so Anyway, I'll let that run and come back to you when, I can, when you can see a bit more of the shape appearing. That's a wiggly infill pattern that uh, Fusion has defaulted to. Uh, it's doing a bit, I think it's doing a double wall. I think this is 30% infill. 
goes a couple of times around the wall and then starts the wiggly pattern again doing the infill. The infill pattern is now wobbling doing wiggly lines in the predominantly Y direction. The first lot of wiggly lines happen in the X direction and now the next layer of them is uh, happening in the Y direction. So interesting infill. I suspect it's an infill that is efficient on movement of the print head and uh, it fills because the uh, although the table is moving backwards and forwards it's predominantly moving in the Y direction and uh, yes it's a uh, infill that I haven't seen previously but being away from the game for 12 months means that all these newer things are uh, developed and uh, it's interesting it's the infill that's used as a default with uh, Fusion 360. I'm just going to run the simulation on Fusion 360 as to how that's the brim, the base of the product. There's the uh, infill squiggly lines being laid down, more of the rim, more of the infill and then uh, there's a layer count happening where the uh, you can see the infill going in in the opposite direction there the um, simulations continuing there it's about where this is up to at the moment we go back and now it's laid down a top and it's uh, filling in the uh, upper section with infill and uh, wall around the uh, out perimeter and uh, it will uh, there's the, the final screen there you can see there's a brim I think that's five millimeters thick with a three millimeter chamfer and then this is uh, eight millimeters high it's 12 points and it's got 36 it's on a 36 millimeter across the flats if it was a, a hexagon but uh, it's effectively two hexagons overlaying each other that is still in the i think it's starting to cap off the five millimeter section of the bottom of this item uh, i can see it's starting to lay down the uh, 12 point nut head on the top and it's doing the infill and it'll build up that wall now so you can start to see the 12 point bolt head rising out of this uh, print and at this point in time the estimated uh, the print time so far has been 34 minutes and it's saying the remaining time is 13. Well, the model's got to get a lot higher in 13 minutes. Um, I'm uh, skeptical about that, but we'll see how it goes. It uh, hasn't missed a beat at this stage. This filament here is just the piece provided with the new printer. It's the sample piece of filament. It looks like I've got plenty of it. It's not going to run out during this print printed that uh, knob there a year ago. This print is close to finishing. The actual uh, timer is saying that there's no time remaining and it's taken 48 uh, minutes but uh, the uh, upper layer hasn't been fitted, printed yet so it's interesting. Uh, it looks like it may have started the first layer of the top of the model now. The print time has clicked on to 49 minutes. 
The remaining time is always an estimation that started off at over two hours and kept reducing um, down as the print took shape. Clicked on to 50 minutes. 3D printing like this isn't quick. We've now gone to uh, 52 minutes. The mirror is finishing the gantries lifting away from the model. It's got a bit of a dribble from the uh, print nozzle dragging off the model itself. But, uh, otherwise the model looks pretty well shown. Now that was interesting, the uh, print head raised all the way to the top until it crashed into the upper gantry. It's not a matter of pressing confirm. Pressing the button there. I suspect then the print, the table temperature will lower. And uh, yes, all but the last uh, moments where the gantry crashed into the top was uh, worked correctly and the model itself uh, looks pretty damn good it's got this uh, long dag on it that eventually broke off we'll uh, knock it off the table in a moment see what it looks like that's the final part released from the table I've broken the brim off it grid off the glass there and very smooth top. I would call that as close to perfect as you'd expect on any 3D printer. Well that makes design, infusion and printing on the end of three a whole lot easier. Get out to your shed and have some fun.